Joined now via Skype by Aaron Hamlin. And of course, Aaron, we know Central New York is so proud of you and they have been for quite some time now. You know, what is it like knowing that when you're going over there, you're representing obviously our nation, we know that, um, but there's a lot of folks in Central New York that have a keen eye on what you're up to in the Olympics. Yeah, you know, it's exciting. I'm so glad to be able to represent this area and to be able to bring a little bit of excitement to to everybody. Um, I can't believe we're going for round four. It's, it's insane, <laughs> but um, it's nice to be able to be home a little bit and, and kind of see people start to get pumped. And yeah, I'm excited to have everybody watching and cheering me on in February. And that's just it as well. Obviously, at this point, you know, when the, when the training and, and the still the World Cups and everything are at a fever pitch, how do you focus on those competitions, but at the same time, uh, you know, obviously have that Olympic goal in mind and that medal goal in mind? Yeah, it's a lot of prep time for us, too. So, yeah, we have, like, the anticipation of being at the Games in about a month, but at the same time, we want to be as prepared and ready to go as fast as we can. So these next couple of weeks, while we still have races, it's a good block of time for us to really dial in our, our sled setups, our equipment, kind of get in the, the race mode again after having a little bit of a break for Christmas and just kind of, it's, it's a good buildup. Um, when we don't race for a while, you kind of get, I don't want to say we lose that edge, but you kind of get out of race mode. So being able to stay in that will keep us kind of on our toes um, once we head over to, to South Korea. And as far as the time between since you, you know, made it back to these games coming up here in February and now the reception knowing you're going back from family, friends, and just plain old fans, whether it's Central New York and around the world, what's that reception been like? It's been pretty crazy. I haven't really seen a ton of people since I've been home. It's been uh, kind of a crazy week or so, but I've definitely gotten a ton of messages um, over the last couple of weeks since I um, clinched my spot on the team um, back in November, I think. Uh, but yeah, it's, it's awesome. I had so many people from the area and from home um, up in Lake Plaza this past weekend. Um, to see me race and to see the rest of the team be announced and the whole official um, nomination of the team. So it, it's really exciting to have so many people into it. And I, yeah, I, it's, it's kind of surreal that I'm going to the fourth Olympics. So I think there's still kind of a sinking in process a little bit, but uh, yeah, I'm, I'm ready to go. And, and listen, we don't want to fast forward for the games. We're obviously incredibly excited and incredibly excited to watch you. But that feeling, uh, the sense of accomplishment when it's over and when you come back to Remsen and just the reception from that standpoint, you know, what is that sense of accomplishment? Like when, not that we want to fast forward, but when everything is done? I think a lot of it will depend on how the Olympics go. Not that I think people will just forget about it if I don't medal. But no. I, after the last games and the incredible uh, welcome home that I got, I think that's going to be really hard to top no matter what happens. Uh, but I... I'm really excited for it. I'm excited to kind of see everyone pumped about the Olympics. That's something that's such a positive thing for this area and to be able to have them all, you know, band together and and cheer for not only myself, but also Team USA and any other athletes from New York and to be able to have the whole excitement of the Olympics kind of carry over into the post-Olympics time when I come home. Um, it just kind of extends it and it makes it... Uh, uh, more of a party and it more of a an experience because I, not only was is it going to be exciting at the games and for my family that goes but once I come home and the people that aren't able to go and people that I might not even know that want to celebrate it will have that opportunity and it's, it's always a lot of fun and certainly you know medal and, and everything as well but obviously just being an Olympian I mean that's a badge you carry with you for life am I right Oh, absolutely. That's not something anybody can take away. Definitely. And as far as right now, we mentioned, obviously, the preparation as far as competing World Cups and obviously trying to get yourself right for the games themselves. But, uh, you know, where do you feel mentally and where do you feel physically as far as getting there and getting into it in February? So far, I feel pretty good. I, knock on wood, have been able to stay healthy and it's really all about maintaining, um, you know, where, where I'm at physically. We, it's hard during the season to try and go too crazy with training off ice. So it's kind of just a, a maintenance kind of structure. And then as far as sliding goes, I am looking to get a little bit more consistency going. Um, over the last couple of weeks, um, my races have been a little 
you know, 50, 50, I've struggled to put two good runs together. So I'm going to hopefully get a little bit more training. We have a few days extra training before racing starts again in the new year. So I'm going to try and just hammer down a bunch of runs and just get comfortable on the sled. And hopefully the next four races can give me the opportunity to just get that consistency in races down. And then I'll probably feel a lot, a lot better going into the games. Um, we have to do four runs for the Olympics. So consistency is huge. But yeah, overall, mentally, I feel really good. I think experience at this point in my career plays such a huge part yeah. in yeah. making me able to keep a level head and, and kind of know what to expect and take everything as it comes. And, and so many fans will follow you, but maybe they don't, don't know the ins and outs, the X's and O's, for lack of a better term, of the luge. And so take us through you know, anything specific that you know, you're looking to, you know, that you want to really nail to make sure you're on that podium by the when it's all said and done. The biggest thing, especially for South Korea, is going to be to have four clean runs. There's a couple spots on the track that have given us all a pretty good run for our money. So the biggest thing is pull as fast to start as I can. It's not something that's been my strength. We pull off of handles and pedal on the ice with spiked gloves. So to be able to do that and stay stable and stay relaxed on the track, we're pretty limited on how much training we get. So right before the games, we'll get, I think, six or seven runs. Um, and so we have to pull from all of our training that we had this fall there. And the biggest thing is going to be sled setup. There's a lot of different things we can play around with, um, depending on the weather, the, everything from humidity to temperature to ice temperature can impact how well our sleds run on the ice because we can change a lot of things um, on our sleds to accommodate for different conditions. And then Curve 9, if anyone follows Luge, they've probably heard of that in South Korea. Uh, we have had quite a quite a troublesome road to get to where we are now um, with Curve 9. It's been uh, given a lot of people problems. So I think, knock on wood again, I have it figured out. But we'll see when we go back in February um, how it pans out. And I think that's going to be the biggest thing. If you yeah. ever see a sled go sideways, it's not a positive thing. So hopefully it doesn't throw me throw me that way. I think you'll be fine. And but you, and you, know, you led perfectly into my next question a moment ago when you said the experience factor. And certainly when you're on a, the world stage, I mean, it doesn't get better than the Olympics. I'm sure your first time there may have been butterflies, and maybe there still will be this time. But when you're actually set and ready to go and ready to get out there, I mean, how much will that experience factor help you as far as your nerves and as far as the focus is concerned? I definitely think it helps a great deal. When I was in Sochi, uh, I definitely noticed, you know, going to the track and being in the whole hype of the Olympics, it was easy for me to just kind of be like, okay, yeah, this is normal. Um, and really break it down to the fact that the routine, whether, while it changes a tiny bit, the grand scheme of it is all the same. We're going to the track, we're sliding, we're around all the same people as we are in every other week. So if you just focus on that stuff, it's, it's just another race. Um, but then when it comes down to, you know, having to perform, I think going into Sochi, I had gone to the Olympics and I had done terrible. I was 16th in Vancouver and I was expected, I had expectations for myself to be on the podium. So that was very disappointing. So I figured I, you know, had nothing to lose. And so um, having, and I didn't expect to go three times, nonetheless four. <laughs> so I think it'll be easy for me to go and just really want to take it all in. And it's going to be my last Olympics. So to enjoy it is the, the biggest goal for me. And to be able to do that helps me relax. You know, when you go out there and just try and enjoy it and have fun, uh, I'm not going to put pressure on myself. I've done really well in races. I've done really terrible and life goes on. So obviously I'm really competitive. I want to do well. And if I perform to what I know I'm capable of, then I should be able to go fast. So hopefully I show up on the day when it counts and I can do that. No question about it. And listen, I, I know it's the cliche question, right? But that feeling, you know, when you're there and knowing that, you know, what you accomplished. I mean, what is it like after that point? I mean, I can't even describe it as I'm asking you the question. So I, I have to, I have to ask you what it feels like when you're there and, and you accomplish what you do. It's pretty amazing. I didn't expect to get a medal in Sochi. So when I got it, everything seemed pretty surreal. It took a long time for it to really seem like a normal thing that I had an Olympic medal, which is crazy. Yeah. But you know, it's it's a great experience and to be able to represent the USA and be out there on the biggest stage in our sport, it's pretty exciting. And um, one of the things that growing up, I was such a huge fan of the Olympics. And so um, to be in that moment and to have my own moment that I had seen so many athletes have before me, it was, it was really cool. It's a very memorable moment and, and pretty exciting. Something that 
not too many things to add up to. Perhaps there's a young athlete watching this that would love to follow in your footsteps. What would be your message to them as they chase this dream? You know, it's, it takes a lot of work. It takes dedication. It's never, not always easy, uh, but it's worth it. So definitely just keep plugging away. Um, but I mean, right from the start, I did something that challenged me and took me out of my comfort zone. So even if something seems crazy at first, don't, don't write it off right away. Stick with it. Yeah, like going fast in the luge, right? <laughs> yeah. Uh, and, and one last thing I'll ask you, if you have, uh, I, I know it's some time before you go, but maybe perhaps a message to all your fans, uh, uh, maybe a thank you for the support, a message to your fans as you head off to South Korea. Yeah, definitely. Thank you so much for the support over, I mean, the last 18 years since I've been in this crazy, crazy adventure. But I appreciate it all, and it's so great to have such an amazing community and extended community and all of central New York um, behind me. So I hope that everyone gets a chance to follow along um, on pretty much all social media. I'll be updating. So keep up. I love taking everyone on my journey. So um, yeah, reach out, say hi, do whatever. I love having everyone involved. Awesome, Aaron. Well, thank you so much. We'll keep in touch with you uh, between now and then and be rooting you on from here in central New York. Thank you so much. Awesome. Thank you.